Hey everybody, welcome to Ravenstead. It's time for another build. This time we're gonna do a piece of scatter terrain with some good elevation to it. I'm thinking a rocky spire with kind of a curve to it and some overhangs. And then right on top, we're gonna have a ramshackled hut kind of perched over the edge, held up by some timbers. So I've got a stack of these foam blocks. I'm gonna glue these together, run a couple of big screws up in there so it's nice and heavy. And uh, we'll get to building that hut on top. Why don't you watch over my shoulder and let's get something made. All right, let's get into this build. I'm gonna glue up these blocks of foam. I wanted kind of like a crescent shape to the rock formation for this build. Uh, just got a mini there to kind of keep scale and make sure that I've got a few playable flat areas uh, on the different levels. I'm just gonna drive some uh, two and a half inch deck screws up in here. Uh, when I'm doing this, I'm being mindful too of areas that I might want to cut away. Uh, so that gives it a little weight, won't tip over. I'm going to use a craft knife here. I don't cut myself, so don't worry about that. Just going to whittle down the shape that I want. This is one of the harder parts for me. Uh, I'm not a sculptor. Um, so it's it doesn't really come naturally, but you know, if you look at a lot of rock formations, once you train your eye, kind of what you want to see, then the hands will follow, hopefully. But you know, I kind of, I come at this hobby in a slapdash kind of fa fashion. Just go with it and see what comes up. I like to create a lot of different levels, a lot of undercuts, a lot of horizontal cuts. And then when I go in with that wire brush here in a minute to texture, that gives uh, you know, a good striated look those deeper cuts that I put in with the craft knife kind of blend out when I uh, go over it with the with the wire brush. So I'll get a good stony texture to it. And any of the flat areas that I've cut away or still like the factory surfaces, I'll texture those up with a little ball of aluminum foil. So the shack on this, I uh, wanted to build like a hut or a shack on top of this outcropping. is all gonna be wood, well, foam but textured like wood so got all my lumber here and there done Ta -da. just kidding so I'm just gonna start building the structure start with some big timbers just glue those in place that one's just kind of sticking out there and nothing so I had to make sure that I had plenty of different cross braces to kind of hold it in in place it gets knocked around on the game table, so it's got to have a little support. So here's the uh, the under foundation of the shack and the flooring. I'll just put these planks down here, and then we'll start working on the upper structure of the uh, shack, framing out the walls, kind of like a timber framing. I'm not using any mortise and tenon joints on this one though. All just glued up. You get the you get the idea though. And once we get our basic frame, then I can plank out the sides. I decided to go with a plank roof on this. I just wanted it to really look ramshackled, you know, kind of run down or rudimentary. So I have a different size planks in there just to give it some irregularity. And I envision that roof being covered in moss, so we'll uh, we'll revisit that in a little bit. I'm just cladding the sides here with some planks, and then I decided to uh, dress up the joinery here with some trunnels, just some big wooden pegs that be drilled and hammered through uh, mortise and tenon joints or lap joints. You gotta watch these things; they'll, they'll pop fly off. There you go. Mm. It gives it a little bit of interest later on when I start painting it out. Uh, I make sure that those trunnels get a little highlight. So that's the structure, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and black bomb this. Moving along in this build a little bit. Nice coat of Mod Podge and. 
black latex paint. Put one of the screws in the bottom so I can hold on to it. We'll do a little dry brushing. So for the wood on this one, I'm using a color that's actually called real brown. Or no, this is coffee bean. And then going over it with cinnamon. So just a medium brown and a light brown. And uh, you know, over the rocky structure, um, we're gonna use gray and a light gray or almost a beige color. So the final dry brushing color for the stone, I'll actually go over the wood with. So you really don't have to worry too much about, you know, you can see where I've hit the wood a couple of times with this gray paint. It all ends up kind of blending in, but uh, you have to make sure that your paints are all relatively the same value. Here's that lighter uh, beige parchment. So that really brings out the edges, the highlights, especially on the wood. You know, you can really see the grain. And you can see those trunnels too on the joinery. so cool. I love doing that. It's so much fun. I don't know. I guess I have kind of a sloppy approach to this, but it seems to be working. You just kind of have to trust the process. Now we'll go over this with a few washes. This is a burnt umber acrylic ink mixed with water. And I'll go over the whole piece with that. So I like to make sure that my paint schemes and my washes are all homogenized you know they're all basically the same values they all work together there's a little green wash I just made this with uh, bright green latex paint and water and then a little Vallejo rust wash you guys if you've seen some of my other videos I use this uh, quite a bit as a highlight color very sparingly on this wood here um, I want the wood to have a really weathered look, uh, not so much a stained look. I'm just touching up those trunnels now. And I put this on the, uh, the stone as well. It gives it a kind of a granite appearance. The iron oxide in the stone shines through. So we got our washes done. Now we'll do a little bit of flocking. So I'm going to paint in a thin coat of PVA glue here, there, everywhere wherever I want grass or moss and then this is some fine flocking woodland scenics flocking I'll just sprinkle that on and then tap off the excess and I went in on the roof with some heavier medium flocking to give it a really heavy mossy appearance I did end up putting a couple extra screws in the bottom of this piece it got a little top heavy Here's some static grass that I made. I just uh, shoot a little blob of glue on a piece of wax paper and then apply static grass with a static grass applicator. I got one from Woodland Scenics. Pretty handy. I use a lot of lichen as well. It's preserved lichen. And that's a little bit of uh, clump foliage. Woodland Scenics clump foliage. Again, just tucking that into little places. Uh, especially if I see a spot where I might have missed uh, some paint or a glob of hot glue that doesn't look right, and just jam some of that in there. Now we got to have our uh, our rotten plank. You guys are probably worried I was going to forget that. There it is. Nice. There we go. I um, needed a one little bit of foliage here. I had a little rat living there in the shack with me, so he needed a place to hide. There we go. Well, let me spin this for you so you can get a good look. There it is, the cliffside shack. That thing is a danger. It's going to fall over any minute now. There's our rotten plank. Can't forget that. And a lot of moss on that roof. So this last shot here, you kind of get a sense of the scale of this piece. It's pretty tall on the gaming table. Appreciate you guys watching. I hope you uh, get a chance to subscribe. Leave me a comment. Love to hear from you. Thanks.